Hi guys, Chiefs First Five Aaron Cruden here, and you're tuning in to Isolation Nation. Let's roll. Isolation Nation. We are back gracing you on your screens along with Israel Dag. He's here too and you've been out checking on your cows, is he? <laughs> yes, yes, been checking on them uh, day, oh not day, every couple of days. Got 12 cows, they're fit and fighting and eating lots of grass and I've even had to get a hay bale and put it in, the, in there and I've eaten the plastic off it. So hey, that shows my farming prowess. I'm pretty good. <laughs> Farmer Dag, have you had any electric shocks lately? No, no, no. So I went and bought this device that tells me if it's on or off. So, you know, just smart. Smart farming, there you go. Very smart. Okay, well, coming up on the show tonight, Bowden Barrett takes off. Michaela Blyde hitting the deck. Oh, my God. As our rugby stars quickly discover, gravity is one of few rules that doesn't change during lockdown. But first, we catch up with a man who's put more defenders on the deck than anyone in Super Rugby, Nani Laomafi. This is the Olympic lockdown challenge, as many press-ups as I can, and I challenge Ari Sabir. Take it back to your high school days. What was what was Nani like at high school? And don't lie, because I'll ask David Bovey. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Nah, bro, I was pretty... Bro, I thought I was... Bro, I was pretty naughty, eh, bro? <laughs> yeah, bro, I was, I was that guy that probably slept in class and just... Um, yeah, bro, just get ready for rugby training, bro, and, and just eat my lunch. But, um, nah, enjoy my time at Palmy Bulls, eh? You know, if you look back... Yeah, yeah. One thing I, you could change from from your high yeah, school days. Yeah, I think for me, bro, it's just about like um like taking schoolwork serious. All I ever wanted to be was a professional sportsman. Yeah, and, and then, um, that's not bad. But it's, yeah, yeah, have, have a balance, eh? Hey? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Because um, yeah, no one really tells you like um that um you're not going to be playing rugby for, you know, for the rest of your adult life. You know, you only yeah, got yeah. if you're lucky, you get ten years. Yeah, that's if you're lucky, but. Um, you know, if you learn all the education and stuff, that can carry you through to your 60, you know. What made you go go to league? Tell us about your league days with the Warriors, bro. Here's a chance. Harrell goes outside and Nani Lomape claims the Warriors' second try. When I was at school, bro, my, um, my two older brothers were, like, we all played, um, we all played uh, rugby growing up. But my two older brothers, they were playing league. After my first 15 games, bro, straight away, jump in the car. So, our first 15 games were at 12.30. Yeah. My league game was at about 2.45. So, after a game, jump in the car, go play with my brothers. And then one of the Warriors Scouts guys were like, oh, bro, come play in this team. Um, we're playing counties Monaco, and you're coming up against these two um, centres that are really, really sharp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, bro, and it was crack up because um, the guy that I ended up marking was Rod J. Oh, to what's that? Yeah, bro. So wow. How was that? So, yeah, bro. Silly, no, it was silly me. feet marking him. Wow. Yeah, bro. Had to strap the ankle. Great <laughs> from uh... two of us, Shank. Who comes towards Morgan and steps straight past him. Rock and Roger. Blink and he's gone. Did you enjoy your days in the league? Yeah, bro. Yeah, 100%. Bro, I love the day. Like, met a lot of good, good mates and still mates that I talk to now and but uh, I think for me, I just wish I had the the, the work ethic or the mindset that I have now. Because, you know, when I was there, I was just happy to be there, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, hard. Being a, uh, being a poor kid and then all of a sudden you got some money. Yeah, you're yeah. in Auckland. Yeah. So you're like, you know what I mean? Now, Milner scatter away from Lamar Marpy. Changing direction. What a brilliant try. And what made you go back to rugby? Because I always knew I was going to come back one day. And yeah. then... Uh, 
obviously, like, um, because I played into your schools with like Adi, mm. Joe Weber, Lola yep. Vesnia, Patrick Tupelotu. And then obviously I tore my ACL again. Yeah. And then um, there was a lot of players that were coming into the Warriors, with like Roger and, and, and Isaac Luke that, and that. So they had to release some players. And then um, I remember the time the Warriors coach was like, oh, bro, if you want to leave, um, you know, um, you can leave, but you still got another year here. Yeah. So I was just like, oh, fuck, you sweet as then. And then, so it was just, yeah, bro, it was Be just honest, like, good timing. like, get out of here. Oh, I was like, oh, bro, because, you know, I was just, um, my son, this fellow was, uh, LA, uh, you're on TV now? <laughs> you're on TV now? Um, yeah, so this fellow, um, was just about to come into my life. And, yeah. and at that time, you know, I was like, ah. Oh, like, I've got no job if I don't take my stuff serious. So, yeah, you have. That's why I'm a big believer and everything happens for a reason, bro. Because mm. um, mm. if the Warriors coach didn't tell me, or oh, you can leave um, if you want, but you still got another contract. And then, like, I rang my agent straight away. And I was like, oh, bro, like, they're looking at um, letting me go. Can you hit up the Hurricanes? The next day, they're like, oh, yeah, sweet. We're keen to have nans. Man. And it was, just, it was just like, um, mean, because everything happens for a reason. That's yeah. why I believe. Because uh, my and my and Conrad were leaving, so there yeah. was two fifteen. So there was two midfield um posies um had opened up, so um yeah bro, and then ended up at the Hurricanes, bro, and um, I haven't looked back since. From looking in the background, bro, I guess family's a big motivator for you, eh? Do you wanna mm. sh- show us what's up in the background? Is that is that all your whanau up there? Yeah, bro. Uh, I've got through the family, through my missus uh, family, so yeah. Obviously got um all my family on this one. Me, um, and, uh, yeah, and it's my uh, oldest daughter, and yep. my youngest boy. Yeah, bro, just trying to make my family happy and and provide a better life um, than what I had growing up. Hopefully, um, when it's all said and done, I have something to show, bro. Bro, it's so mean, like seeing all the photos in the background and seeing that. What motivates you? Like most of you, Polly boys, family is a big part of your guys' life, eh? Yeah, hard, bro. Like, um, you know, when growing up, bro, like. Um, you know, it was just hard to get on school trips. Mm. We didn't have the money or stuff like that. So, yep. I think for me, bro, I just saw rugby as a as an opportunity to, to help my mum and dad. And and yep. for me, uh, I I play hard and train hard so that um, whatever my kids want, bro, I, I'm there financially. Yep. I'm in a place that you know that they don't have to worry about the struggles that I had growing up and stuff like that. So. That's the reason why I train hard. Well, it's fair to say by now, everyone is our missing sport. They are desperately missing rugby. But Izzy, I bet you're not missing having to tackle blokes like that. Uh, no, not at all, Kirsty. My shoulders will be, uh, they're pretty hit it. My knees are gone. And uh, I don't want to be another highlight reel like Julian Sevier. Sevier! I put them on the Super Rugby Instagram page, absolutely give me the bunt of doom. And no, I don't like it and I don't want to do it again. Good on TK from the Black Friends. One multi sentence that you could use on the field is to tika mai. Run it straight. So if someone brushes you off on the field, you tell them to tika mai. Oh yeah, come on in. To tika mai. To tika. Hey guys, Bodie Barrett here. Whilst in isolation, uh, some of the things I have to practice is a crossfield kick, so I'm going to make do with what I've got here. I'm going to imagine my wing is somewhere up there. I'm down here, so we'll see how it goes. surfing at the moment so I've found the next best thing. Pick a sweet wave on the old YouTube channel and then jump on the board and have a crack. Yeah. Hey team, Chris Strange, Dave Mavilli and George Bridge. This is Isolation Nation and this is our bubble. Alright boys, we're gonna play a little little quick fire quiz. No arguing. Alright? Yeah. Fire away. Who's the dad of the flash? <laughs> There's only one dad, who is it? Me. <laughs> oh, you, you're a shambles. Who's the best cook? Oh, 
my dear, he did put it to us. He's, yeah, nah, he was always, he's always asking questions how to I'll cook. cook yeah. Yeah. I've been cooking the butts. How to me and Bridget. Yeah, definitely put it on. There's got to be one, boys. Come on, who is it? Just be humble. Yeah, we right, go, we're we're quite like cooking. Who's the smelliest? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Yeah. Who's the best looking? Oh, 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 oh I have to say George. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's not me. me. <laughs> Who's the ugliest? <laughs> oh, it is <laughs> Last one. Who's most likely to blow out post footy? <laughs> <laughs> Blackburn Sevens player Michaela Blyde here, and you're watching Isolation Nation. One of my favourite things to do in the game of Sevens. A score try, so I'm going to try and reenact Dibby Ioannis, the turtle celebration. I'm good, you? thank you. How are you? I'm all good. Day That's to day good. here, mate. Yeah. Looking after the kids, eh? Oh, daddy of the year. So what have you been up to? Yeah, um, I'm out here in Leperton, out yep. on my parents' farm. So doing a little bit of farm work here and there, training here and there as well. But to be honest, it's perfect. I'm not complaining at all because I'm getting my dinner cooked every night. Yeah. And my washing done every day. So <laughs> to be honest, it's it's way better than living in Papamoa at the moment because my mum is the best mum ever and doing everything for me. So it's perfect. I'm not complaining. Advantage is over. To the edge, Niall Williams with a great ball for Blyde. That's the side they were going for. And the deception was created by Niall Williams and the finish by Michaela Blyde. So let's touch on the sevens. Um, I was reading, you made your debut at 17. Yes, I did. Yeah. In, in, uh, in 2000. Yep. Yep. Wow. What was that like? Well, ever since I could walk, my dream was to represent my country in sport. Like I yeah. literally tried everything, athletics, soccer, basketball, touch. Um, but I never could make it to that next step of playing for New Zealand. So yeah. when sevens came up, it was just a perfect opportunity to try something new. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, when it first started, I didn't really take it very seriously. I was kind of like, oh, yeah, whatever, it will be a squad. <laughs> But yeah. I never actually thought I'd play for New Zealand. Yeah. Um, so when the opportunity came up, I was I, I can't even remember what it felt like receiving the jersey because I was just like, man, I just want to play. But I, the one thing I'll never forget is when um, we were warming up, getting ready for our first game um, in Aussie, and my dad comes into my vision <laughs> and I was yeah. like, <laughs> you started crying. I, I, dro I dropped the ball and I ran to him and I cried. Oh wow! <laughs> oh my God, hi, Dad. How good would he have felt though? He would have been emotional oh, too. Yeah, massively proud. He always said that the first tournament that I um, was picked for, he'd go and watch. And yeah. so, luckily, it was in Australia because I don't think if it was anywhere else, he'd come. Like my parents aren't very um, experienced travellers, being typical dairy farmers. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you need to leave home. You got everything. Exactly. You, someone's yeah. got to milk the cows. So <laughs> <laughs> they've got to stay home. Yeah. yeah. So um, no, it was an amazing moment, and um, representing my country for the first time was it was a dream come true. So I'm very very grateful to be doing this job, pretty much. Well, let's chat about the team as well. From, from the outside looking in, the environment, it just looks like you girls are just so tight. You're getting on and it transfers to on the field as well. Is that player driven or is that from the coaches above? Or, no, know, but it, a bit of everything. Um, mm. Alan Bunting, he's he's one of those guys that's real real culture driven. Um, so he's obviously a very proud Māori. And um, mm. after the Rio Olympics, when the girls got silver, we really needed to do a 360. So we changed everything. He changed yeah. um, our environment. He changed all of our values, morals and our team. And yeah. so before we went into the 2016-17 season, 
he just focused purely on our off field. Um, mm. I think before the Dubai tournament in 2016, we might have trained like three or four times before we lost. I mean, before we left the country, and yeah, then yeah. when we got to Dubai, we might have trained twice. We just purely focused on, you know, finding that love for each other again. Because if you're not if you're not bonding off the field, then mm. you're going to struggle to play alongside each other on the field. Um, so yeah, our environment is amazing. Like we all, we yeah. call each other sisters because we literally are like sisters. Like we've got girls yeah. flirting with each other. They hang out with each other every day. They yeah. go to the club with each other every day, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe yeah. every Saturday. So every Saturday, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so no, we've got a real cool environment. Yeah, we everyone loves each other, which is cool. Well, everyone's going a little bit crazy, aren't they? You're losing the plot. I've lost the plot, and so are our Sky Sport commentators, is he? They're losing the gherkin. <laughs> A huge moment in the short but eventful life of young Eden. Ah. The prize is tantalisingly close, but all the previous efforts have been agonisingly short of the mark. The technique, well, it certainly can't be faulted. The patience, (laughs) exemplary, it's really only a matter of time. A slightly longer run-up, perhaps, could be the answer. Come on, Eden, let's go. Oh, brilliant! What a moment yeah. in history that is for this outstanding yeah. young prospect. The two contestants now are getting ready to go. Whitehead, he's been outstanding and consistent all week. And to his right, the rookie. Wow, well, the rookie Blackfeet has set this tournament absolutely alight. And they're off now. You can see the veteran on the right. Whitehead got away to a great start, but the rookie's hanging in there, slipping in onto the right hand side. Now, can he get through? You can see the veteran Whitehead just staying out in front and really accelerating now. He's too good. He's just too good. You know what, Izzy? When you did your Israel Dag lockdown Olympics, (laughs) I thought your time, uh, easy, because I've seen you doing your burpees. Has anyone been out of put it with you? And who's next? No one's even close. I thought I'd be absolutely slow. It took me about 300 minutes to eat that wheat mix. But um, uh, everyone's giving it a good go. Josh Iwani, mate, your first five. He's meant to have that ball on a string. I'm going to operate that Carl Spencer more often than first five minutes. What I will say, mate, is you're being honest. I don't think there'll be many honest Mm. people out there doing it on their first go. There'll be a lot of retakes, so give me that, brother. So just before the isolation period started, a lot of the boys didn't get a lot of weight, so you just got to work with with what you got. I got the old trusty Toyota Hilux here. So here we go. Go down, go down. Go. Oh. I'm Dorian Pali and you're watching Isolation Nation. As a centre fullback, it's always important for me to practice my hit tackling. It's pretty hard to do in isolation, but I've come up with a bit of an idea. All you need is a hay bale. But chase away the goats first. It's a bit harder than tackling the Aussies. From hay bales to Hamilton, not quite the most glamorous place in New Zealand to live, especially when you've just come back from Montpellier like Aaron Cruden, is he? Yes, he's been sunbathing on the beach in France and he's come back to Hamilton and the furthest beach away is Aline Raglan. So in that sense, he's not enjoyed it, but hey, he's back in New Zealand. He's in New Zealand colours, he's playing for the Chiefs and he's playing extremely well as well. So it's great to see the big man, or short man, I should say, back in New Zealand. I'm Chiefs First 5'8", Aaron Cruden. Thanks for tuning in to Isolation Nation.
What do your days look like without rugby? Um, without rugby, um, they've been pretty good actually. We just try and stay busy. Um, I've got a little daughter now, so there's a lot of daddy daycare and that takes up a lot of time, which is nice. Um, a bit of a silver lining, I suppose, with this time off. But then also just trying to, um, I don't know, try things that I don't normally get time to try. So I've been doing a bit of cooking and a bit of barbecuing, which has been really fun. Obviously something that we've brought back from France with us is the crepe, and it's certainly become a staple in our household. So we're gonna give it a go today. Not bad, huh? Also even just a few arts and crafts. So um, a bit of, I've bought a colouring in book and I've been doing a bit of that. Colouring's like really good for your brain, eh? And just being able to like switch off and relax. Yeah, it's been pretty good. It's sort of, time goes, you just get away, you pick your colours and sort of, yeah, half an hour to 45 minutes later, you're sort of like, oh wow, okay. Yeah, that's what I've created. Is it too much of a mission for you to show us your colouring in book? Um, nah, nah, nah. I'll go Can and grab it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so it's that's very, cool. um, yeah, just something that sort of is able to pass the time a little bit and break up a bit of the mundaneness of isolation. That's really, really cool. I love it. Let's talk about becoming a dad. What was it like becoming a dad for the first time? Oh, it was unreal. Um, man, it's like real life magic to me. Um, we actually, so we were in France at the time as well, so we didn't have a lot of family around, so we had to sort of lean on each other as well. And my wife, Grace, she was amazing. Then when Amelia was born, um, yeah, I didn't really believe in magic beforehand, but right then and there, that was what real life magic to me felt like. So it's been amazing. It's probably given me a lot more perspective in terms of, um, oh here, she's just come out actually. She's crying in the background. Um, yeah. <laughs> For me and my personality, I invested so much into my rugby that at times I probably didn't have quite the right balance with a lot of things. Um, but becoming a father, you've just got to give so much more in terms of being there to care for your wife and now your child as well. And obviously still extremely dedicated to my rugby, but I think it's allowed me to have a bit more of a balanced lifestyle um, and really appreciate all of the little things in each aspect of my life too. So it's been really cool. Just say, if you don't want to talk about this, but given everything that you went through early on in your career, um, did you always know that children, you were going to be able to have children? Yeah, so now, yeah, obviously I uh, went through a bit of an illness um, when I was 19, 20, and um, Grace and I, we had just actually started dating before that all happened, um, and she stayed strong and supported me through all of that, um, which was completely amazing. And I already had the feeling that she was the one before that, but during that time, it was just uh, cemented. We always just said when it came to the time when we felt comfortable, we would just try and see what happened. Um, and yeah, I guess, you know, lucky for us, we were able to do that because uh, there's people that have been in my position before that maybe haven't had the opportunity mm -hmm. or, you know, it was taken away from them for through the illness. So yeah, for us, we were just, uh, well, and me personally, I was ecstatic. I was pumped. I always wanted to be a father and um, now that I'm sitting here as one, I uh, yeah feel very lucky and very grateful. It's really special. Um, how many years were you in France for? We were there for just under three years. Did you pick up any French? Uh, un petit peu, just a little bit. Nah, it's um, it's it's a really tricky language. There's just so many elements to it, mm -hmm. but um, I feel like I can understand a lot more than I can speak. But um, I'll give it a go. Okay, so. Bonjour, je m'appelle Aaron Crudon. Um, pour le dernier trois ans, uh, j'ai joué au rugby en France pour le club Montpellier. Mais maintenant, j'ai retourné à la maison à Nouvelle-Zélande. Et à ce moment, c'est très, très difficile, uh, difficile temps avec le coronavirus. Mais restez fort, restez calme, et let's go! <laughs> They said I couldn't flip. <laughs> Stay safe, New Zealand. Wee oui, wee, oui. not bad, Aaron Cruden, not bad at all. Izzy, what have you got to serenade us with? Wee <laughs> wee, oui, oui. are you going down the slide, Kirsty, or what? <laughs> you know, come on, no. 
for Spanish, no hola, como esta, a bit of Maori, kia ora, girlfriend, um, yeah, a bit of Japanese, arigato for zine bus, come by, cheers, yeah, just a bit of this, a bit of that, um, no, nah, I'm terrible, I can't even learn my own language, let alone another language. I've got plenty for people at home to be doing at this time. So learn your own language, Izzy. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you at home for watching as well. That's another episode of Investec Super Rugby Isolation Nation. Remember, we'll be back on Sunday evening at 7.30 p.m. But for now, we've got one last thing before you go. We'll let TK from the Black Ferns sing us out. Enjoy. I'm not looking for no love. Jake Goodyear, and that was Isolation Nation.